Thursday, December 1st, 2016. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dispense with the ringing of minutes. Okay. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Yes. Planning department dropped this off from Ohio Department of Development, and this is regarding our award that we got for CDBG funds for the downtown revitalization grant for the city of Vermillion, three hundred thousand. This is the fourth one we've gotten for them. Yeah, they've been very successful. So, uh, yeah, the plans are pretty much to, uh, you know, uh, building facades, some a little bit of street paving, and uh, doing some historical lighting. Well, congratulations to them. I can again remember at that time we also had put in for a $1.2 million chip grant that included here in Rumea, and we and we, we lost that by the, I mean, the slimmest of margins. Um, I know back in, in the spring they'll go after that again. Uh, uh, if you remember, <coughs> I think it was. <coughs> April this past year, we have a we had a reality show ask us to uh, uh, do a filming release for them. Uh, it's the 90 Day Fiance, happily ever ever after. They want to film down on the uh, courthouse lawn, not inside the building, but outside of the building um, next Friday. So I think there's a motion there for you guys to uh, approve me to uh, go ahead and sign off on this. I well, made it very clear that it's exterior only. I like that motion now. He has it. Okay. Um, if you remember a while back, we had a um, request to do some um, renovations over at the um, CCF over at, uh, on Tiffin Ave. Um, we were waiting on getting a approval for a $23,000 uh, DYS grant to do insulation of the exterior um, ductwork up on top of the roof. The foam. Um, and we went ahead and did that yeah. prior to approval. That has since been approved. We will get our funds returned to us. Okay. okay. Um, We'll talk a little bit about health insurance. Um, you know, Ed just turned, Ed just kind of sent out the numbers for the end of November. Our trust funds got uh, a little over one point six million dollars in it. Um, well, that came back. Yeah, that's done well. We started out about three hundred and fifty thousand to start the year off. Um, but again, that included a half a million dollar advance from the general fund. That 1.6 million is the 500 that we gave. That includes the 500 we gave them. Whatever. Um, our IBNR, which is essentially it's an actuarial reserve calculation that's done every year. Uh, the one that was done for the end of 2015, that number was 1.3 million. So we're ahead of that. A um, reason I'm bringing this up, we might might want to consider. Uh, getting ourselves repaid some of that money this year. Wouldn't we be smarter to do it next year, Pete? Um, possibly the, the one issue that comes up when, we, when the auditors do the audit is, you know, if there's no movement made, they, they start to question the validity, the validity of that. You know, if we make a, a, some kind of you know, transaction this year, then that, that looks more like it's it's an actual um, you loan, if, if yeah. you will. Um, I mean, we could. You guys can think about it. Maybe talk about it next week. But uh, <coughs> I think we should probably do something this year, even if it's nominal. You know, fifty, 
hundred thousand, something like that. But I think we probably want to consider something like that. Was that trust fund? It was down to what about under a hundred thousand? I think at one point, yeah. Yep. Well, we a good count. Got a lot of healthy people here, though. Well, again, we made some pretty significant premium increases over yeah. the last several years. So that's part of it. But then again, yeah, right now, um, if we can, from the October report, um, our numbers are practically dead on the, as the previous year. So we're not, we didn't see uh, any you know, growth in claims or anything like that. It was actually fairly stagnant, which is, which means, yeah, we've had a pretty darn good year. But you can think about that, and we'll consider something next week. Um, I know we talked about this as well. Is um, the um, our adult probation department had requested uh, how Supreme Court Security Division come down and take a look at that building regarding security of it? Um, they made quite a few recommendations. We've gone ahead and done a few of the, the small things. So one was that you know we were we were putting in a new panic alarm system, so that was one of the things which we were took care of ourselves, and we had planned to do that. That was already in the works. So that's already been done. Um, another one is they thought we should upgrade our uh, the camera security system down there. Uh, got a quote for just under seven thousand dollars to do that. Are you okay with proceeding with that now? Yeah, I'll tell you what, when you take a look at the security down there and you look at who they're dealing with, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're at risk okay. every day. Well, if, you, know, you probably should be aware that uh, Judge Burnett is, is going to be asking for a full-time deputy to be down there. That's going to be a 2017 budget item. Now you have to consider um, the big thing was the windows. Um, Gary got some quotes on that. Um, essentially, you're looking at two types of windows, which is a um, uh, are essentially shatterproof windows, kind of like safety glass, where it just doesn't doesn't just all shatter and go everywhere. This is if it breaks, it all stays in one place. Um, that's probably the, the lower level security level. Um, the higher one is to go with full bulletproof glass. Uh, we got a quote on the lower level security, the shatter resistant, and uh, that's over $57,000. That's just one quote. Yeah, uh, four but, windows? No, oh, that's no, that's a lot of windows. That's, oh, for, that's for the whole kitchen. That's for the whole building. Yeah. That's the recommendation. Anything on the ground level where there are people behind those windows that that's that you that's Plus you're gonna, be in there. Didn't they talk about tinting? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this includes that. Yeah. Okay. Essentially making it like one way glass, if you will. Why don't Can't you just see. tint the windows that are there? Are you you're telling me they're just regular plate glass? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, again at that rate we're talking about a bid situation. Um, I'm sure the quote does not include prevailing wage. That would probably have to be considered, so it would probably go up more. And the bulletproof glass was 250. Um, essentially five times that, so more probably more than that. Yeah, quarter million dollars or more. So I'm not sure if you know if we want to go ahead and get started on that road. Um, you know, I'm not sure with with city permits and that if we're going to have to. Hire like an architect or engineer to help put this together. <coughs> have Gary find out. Yeah, I'll have Gary find out. What if you just get a price on tinting the windows in place? I'm sure we can get that done too. But if you put those other, if if you put the shatterproof windows in, which is the lower level, mm -hmm. that would they would be tinted. That's in, included in that price. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not going to stop a bullet. All that does is 
going to keep the big piece of glass from falling. The, the other glass is going to break the same way. And the argument with the tinting is can't see in. See where you're yeah, you can't see where somebody's at. Um, you know, if, uh, if a deputy is, is put down there, we're talking some more improvements like a metal detector, um, they essentially want to put in a station with a essentially check-in window. Um, there's going to be some alarm system upgrades that don't have the cost of that, some signage improvements. All told, those will probably be about ten thousand dollars as well. What does the metal detector cost that you would actually just walk through? We got like you um, I'm not sure if this is a walkthrough or a handheld, but uh, uh, sounds like the staff down there or, or whoever has looked at this and the unit they're looking at. It's about thirty-five hundred bucks. You know, with all the crazy stuff going on today, you know, those those people down there are really got put at risk, and mm -hmm. we want to make sure that. They're not part of the crazy stuff that's going on in the world today. So, yeah. Okay. Well, like I said, I'll, I get um, get quotes on just doing the tinning piece of that. Well, um, I know Barb is coming in here next. Um, well, that was quite a uh, an honor. Yeah, just it was gonna steal her thunder a little bit. Where. Uh, our dog warden agency was uh, um, was given the honor of being named Agency of the Year by the Ohio County Dog Wardens Association. Pretty good. So thanks to Barb and her staff. Yeah. Well, they do a great job over there. I mean, you know, when you take a look at what we had years ago. eight years ago or nine years or ten years ago, and then you take a look at what we have now, that's... You know, it's a self-sustaining facility. Shape. You know, she's got obviously, you know, newer building which they're paying for through the dog tag sales. So. Yeah. That's good. You know, where I where I think we're we're, we're uh, where they really got recognized is some of the uh, community programs that they do with kids and you know, you know, partnering up with like a, a juvenile detention home. And having those kids come over here and learn some responsibilities and some other at-risk youth type of things, I think that uh, that helped a lot towards it. Good. Okay. What's this? Um, looks like a change order to B and M for the Mittawonga Basin for twenty-nine thousand. Yes. What is it? My understanding is for more surveying work to be done on the areas that are unsewered at this time to look at um, to go down those streets that where we don't have sewers right now. Take a look at the you know what depth the sewers would need to be and that type of stuff. I mean, if you want to have Jack come in and explain it, that's that's as much as I know. Yeah, I would for thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, I asked him. I said, oh, I thought, wasn't this included? And he goes, right. no, it wasn't. So. And why wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, we're paying $459,000. Mm -hmm. So you want to hold this and have him come in next Yeah, we week? can do that. Okay. Anything else, Pete? No, that's all I got. Okay. Don Barb, if you didn't see it. <coughs> yeah, let's read those, Pat, before she gets <clears throat> Do you have these marked one and two, Carolyn? Yes, those need to be adopted in order. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Right. So, resolution uh, authorizing county auditor to make budget modifications and a supplemental appropriation. Second. Yeah. Mr. Monaghan? Yeah. Mr. Farrell? Yes. 
resolution authorizing the county auditor to make near from transfers. Second. Mr. Senegal? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Resolution entering into agreement with Pictometry International. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Resolution authorizing County Auditor to make a budget modification for landfill. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Uh, resolution uh, first of entering into agreement with U.S. Bank Equipment Finance. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Resolution authorizing County Auditor to make a budget modification. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Resolution entering into agreement with Blue Technologies. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Resolution authorizing the county auditor to make budget modifications. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Resolution entering into agreement with the official payments corporation. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Resolution for then and now. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. 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 Resolution authorizing county order to make budget modification of supplemental appropriation. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Resolution enter renewing the agreement with Vision Services. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. <coughs> Resolution releasing liens and claims against the property located at 2902 South Campbell Street. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Resolution entering an agreement with addendum with Caremark. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. If you agree with motion, authorize County Administrator Pete Daniel to execute a location release with Discovery Communications. Second. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. That's it. Okay, fire. You're up. Pete. Good morning. Good morning. Um, by law, I'm supposed to announce the sale of dog tags, which starts <coughs> this morning, and the dog tags are remaining the same price as last year. Uh, the price will double January 31st, and that's also by law. It's a penalty if you don't buy your license. So they have people have 60 days to buy them. We have 24 places selling tags now. Um, we just took on uh, Row Feeds and Seeds in Monroeville. They want to sell them just during the license period and not after. A lot of the smaller places don't like to collect the penalties. So uh, that like I said they start uh, today and we've already had a rush of people. They came out with a new color. I don't know if everybody's gonna be happy about it, but it's kind of a turquoise, but it's gonna be seen, and it's probably one of the only counties that are gonna have the color because I don't know if anybody else ordered them. The surrounding counties had just kind of the same color, so it's, it's easy for the people to see it and read it. Um, and also, I sent you all an email that my agency got an award for being the best in the state. Congratulations. Yes, wow. And I'll get a, a uh, I'll get a trophy or whatever or whatever award thing that they give out at the conference, the winter conference. So I had gotten the dog warden of the year several years ago. I don't know if you remember that, about probably four or five years ago. Because Pete wrote this outstanding thing about me. <laughs> I bribed him. <laughs> but uh, I was just wanted to thank the commissioners for always being very supportive of my agency and what I do out there. And uh, I try to represent you as best I can. Thank you. You do a good job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Hey, I've got one more thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, about your dog tags, Barb. Yes. It seems like every year, you get down to the end, you want to extend it. 
Right. Are you planning to do that this year? <laughs> uh, Get that out of the way now. The date is what? Uh, is it, I believe it's February Wednesday. Is it Tuesday? Tuesday or Wednesday? It's Tuesday. Tuesday. Anybody's got a calendar? It's yeah. a Tuesday. January yeah. 31st. Yeah, Tuesday. January 31st is a Tuesday. Yeah, usually I do it if it's going to be a weekend or a holiday. It's kind of the board's wishes because you're going to get the phone calls too. I don't mind doing it because if I do it for a day or two, I don't get any complaints. If I do it, that those people that come in and it, it's, what's the feel of the board? I, I don't have a problem with it, even if it's just one day, a one day extension. You, you come back and I always it. come back. Yeah. So I'm just and we saying. don't know what kind of winter we're going to have. And what, what's the feel of the board? I, I know they have 60 days. You know? What, you go through the end of January? Correct. Right. And on the you first... that weekend coming up, why don't you just make it, uh, what, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th of February? 4th of February? Yeah. I'd like not to announce that. That way, that. It, gives, that way it gives them the weekend. <laughs> right. Can I not announce that ahead of time? Because then that's just going to make them... Okay. Wait. Yeah, you, you, you're running your show. You go ahead and do what you... Yeah, you do what you think is best. Okay. Is that right with you, Pete? I'd rather, no? Well, I mean, you could get it done now and approve it, but then it's going to go out as a... All right. We'll see you in a month, Barb. Yeah. All right. I just feel it's better that way, only because people... Well, I got the 4th now, so they're going to come in on the 5th and say, well, you know, I, it said till the 4th. It's best just to probably keep it to the 31st. Right now, yes. And then we'll see how that goes, see how it takes sales. And then it makes you guys look like heroes come that day you extend it. So that's what it's all about, right? <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Abby, we're ready for you if you're ready. Pardon? This being... <coughs> We've got a PowerPoint to pull up, so that's all right. Let me know when you're ready I'll find, if I don't hear I'm just then. testing to make that we have a video within the PowerPoint. Does Does that work? work? Okay. I'm clicking on it and it's not doing it. It looks like it.
Yep. <coughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank morning. you for the opportunity to talk with you this morning. For those of you that have not met Ryan Carbula yet, he is presenting with me today. Ryan started back in March as our new program manager, so he's going to be covering some of our work for our business expansion and retention program. So um, all of you, of course, familiar with ACADEC, our work uh, combines the vision of both the public and private sector to support um, policies and activities that will move our area forward and promote economic growth. Our board of directors, our investors, we did make a conscious effort in 2015 and 16 to be sure we are incorporating the viewpoint of the private sector in our organization. So we did some extensive outreach held five executive briefings with area um, business leaders and community leaders. Um, the result was actually that we added 15 new investors to the organization who support this vision of a public-private partnership, secured over 29 uh, recommitments from our existing investors. So the result, in addition to our public support from all of you, is 44 private investors that support the organization. So I wanted to touch today on, you know, our work on our strategic priorities. These will look familiar to you. Uh, we set this agenda back in 2014 with the help of our board and of our investors. We outlined five strategic priorities for the organization. Local image and advocacy so that we establish and reinforce Erie County's um, image as business friendly and pro-growth. Business attraction, so targeting growth companies and supporting business attraction efforts for the area quality of place, which simply means that there's a lot of resources out there to support area employers, but uh, we need to ensure that those resources are well deployed and that Erie County companies are receiving the best assistance available. Entrepreneurship and supporting our existing industry base. So I just wanted to go through an update on each of those categories, <coughs> just some brief highlights. Uh, for local image and advocacy, I'm pleased to announce that we just launched a new website for the Erie County Economic Development Corporation. So I encourage you to visit the website. We think it's really well done. Uh, we worked with Tandem Media to do so. It features some large hero images that rotate through um, an intuitive, responsive design. So you'll see from the top bar there, if companies are Googling Erie County and visiting economic development, we want to make sure it's easy for them to find what they need immediately and understand the advantages of our area. And we feature some vivid calls to action so that people are contacting us about opportunities. So this is just one component of a communications plan and outreach effort that we'll be launching into 2017. Um, the concept, again, is to make sure area businesses and potential entrepreneurs are aware that Erie County supports them and has resources for them. And then it also enables everybody who lives and works in Erie County to promote ourselves to their networks, which we think is a really effective sales tactic rather than um, you know, broad outreach that we might not be able to reach as many as you all and who you can talk to within your network. Under business attraction, what I wanted to highlight, um, and as you all know, we've discussed with each of you, the globalization and knowledge economy has resulted in a very competitive business attraction environment for economic development. Uh, you know, we found a statistic that back in the 1990s, <coughs> there was one firm looking to relocate for every 500 firms in existence in the United States. And these days, that statistic is one firm looking to relocate for every 1,300 firms in the United States. So there's just an increased competitiveness in that environment. And in order to respond to that, actually, the state of Ohio <coughs> launched an effort they call Site Ohio. And the concept was that they want to be more competitive and more proactive. And that first starts with understanding the assets that they have available across the state. So Site Ohio was a comprehensive process where they actually hired a site consulting firm called Insight Consulting to review properties and communities across the state of Ohio that would be ready to go for industrial development. So they don't want a, a community that can win a deal five months from now, six months from now. They want communities that are ready to win right now. Their sites are ready to go. Their communities are ready to go and support area employers. So, so they, want um, the infra, they want the infrastructure in place. They do. Okay. So um, the application process for this project, I'll call, uh, Site Ohio, is very comprehensive. 
Um, over 500 applications were submitted to the initial round for this process. That was then cut down by this consulting firm to um, 130. And then that was further cut down to 28 finalists. Um, and our site application for the city of Huron was actually one of those finalists. So we were one of 28 communities to receive an on the ground visit from this site consulting firm to review our application, review our site, but more importantly, review our community, our economy, our labor pool, and what we have to offer. Um, and I'm pleased to say the results were really favorable. We've been recommended to continue on in that application process. So we'll likely be one of 20 sites across the state of Ohio that leaves this process uh, certified from a site Ohio lens. But that, that term's thrown around rather loosely in economic development, certified sites. The benefit of this certification and this engagement with Insight Consulting is site consultants have been on the ground and seen this site, seen our community, reviewed our data, and agreed that we're ready to go. This, this could move. This is a good product. So the state of Ohio now knows that, and they will actually be going out and proactively marketing our area on our behalf, and we're on a short list of 20 sites that will be involved in that process because we were competitive in this application process. What's the size of the site Andy's got? So the size of the site, um, <laughs> off the base, uh, only sites of over 30 acres were able to submit for this process. So you can probably imagine right from the get-go that's somewhat hard to find ready-to-go 30-acre sites in Erie County. Um, a few of the other parameters that they were pretty insistent upon was that it be located in an industrial park um, and that you had site control. So if you didn't have those two things, you were immediately eliminated. So we actually did five applications across Erie County. We do get feedback from the consultants regardless of whether it moves forward in that process. And we had a few that were moved to pipeline status. So if we were able to address some of the challenges with those sites, um, it would be in a better position for an opportunity. So over in here in Industrial Park, there's a 30-acre-plus site? There is about 20 acres plus under control of the city of Huron. So our application involved that land and then directly contiguous parcels. So that is one issue that they'd like us to resolve in moving forward with the certification is yeah, they'd like an option on that. Right, and that's what I was going to say. I didn't think it was 30 acres. Not quite. How about our quarry lakes? So nothing was 30 acres in Quarry Lakes. The largest contiguous site there is 13 acres. But we did actually submit Quarry Lakes as an application in combination with the farmland that's directly south of that park. Um, I believe that's our yellow pipeline status. One of the challenges there from their perspective was um, utility capacity as it currently stands. Um, they're focused on an industrial user, so they want excess capacity and a lot of delivery a lot of delivery currently to the site um, that said it doesn't mean the park doesn't have opportunities in other spaces they're focused on heavy industrial users well if something can be worked out with NASA down the road here you've got a lot of acres out there on 250 we all do of the, all of the infrastructure and uh, much like uh, Nexus gas line will have a tap into that, so we'll have everything out there, it looks like. Good. Yep, that um, was one of our third submissions, actually. You're covering all the bases. Uh, so site control was an issue from their perspective on that one. Um, I'm sure you're all aware. I think we've discussed that before. So I will say, you know, large acreage, we call them mega sites. That tends to be more and more the requests that we're receiving for potential development. So the sooner we could address that barrier, I think it's a good opportunity. Quality of place. Uh, this is our fourth strategic priority. Again, it simply means coordinating resource providers, making sure our area companies are best supported. The issue that comes up most often for <laughs> us, and probably not surprising to all of you, is around workforce, the availability and quality of workforce. Um, so this is one example of how we work with our educational and workforce development partners to support area employers. I wanted to show this brief video for you. Um, we had our first annual Future Makers Showcase where we brought in over a thousand area ninth graders 
to EHOVE Career Center to meet with and tour activities and skill sets with area employers. So we had um, about 1,200 students, 11 area school districts, and 25 plus stations or area employers demonstrating the skills that they'd like from our area's future workforce. Oh, no sound. Dylan, is there something I should do for sound? I don't know. Um, I should be okay here, so. Manufacturing Showcase event. We have over 1,100 ninth grade students from Erie and Huron County Schools is that loud here enough? with us, as well as over 20 business partners for the students to experience hands on engaging activities in the manufacturing industry. Several of the students will experience robotics, electronics, welding, paint booth spray, in addition to some team building and other activities. We are excited to have the business partnerships as well as the educational school commitment to provide these students with wonderful experiences in what manufacturing industry is for today as well as tomorrow. So that recap was put together by EHOVE's visual communications team. And we think it's a good summary of the day and that of that effort. So that be, will be something that will continue into future years, expand the career paths that they're exposed to at an earlier and earlier age. The concept again is to, as um, the economy becomes more competitive, for companies to start growing their talent early. We know the economy changes quickly, so we want students that are already paying attention to what skills and what demands there will be in the future. They have a lot of they have a lot of programs out there that they're getting the kids ready to go out, out into the workforce that the workforce is vital, you know, vitally needs some of those skills that they have and they're getting less and less and less. So they're gonna be a big demand. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And we, I think, too, what's nice about this event is it's not just um, EHOV students who are able to participate. So a student might not enroll in high school in a full-time welding program, but all the same, they might become an engineer who ends up working in manufacturing or industry and still needs those skill sets. So it's across a variety of spectrums that people should have awareness about how our nation really builds and invents and designs things. They have some specialty welding programs out there that once these kids graduate, they don't have any trouble. Oh yeah, I I um I get that question sometimes from employers like, oh, how's EHOVI doing? Do their students find jobs? And actually, most people don't know that you know institutions like that. That's how their success is measured. In order to maintain their accreditation, they must be placing their students into positions. And the success rate that their students find in immediately gaining employment within their prospective field is very high. I, I can't quote for each individual program, but consistently over 90%. So. Students that engage there are finding employment opportunities. Then the last update in our entrepreneurship category, again, we have a strategic priority to grow the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Erie County, and we do so through our RISE program, our Regional Incubator for Sustainability and Entrepreneurship. RISE has been around now for about five years. It's supported by the Area Community Foundations, by BGSU Firelands. Um, and as we're entering into our next year of the RISE program, we thought it a good time to revisit our strategic planning committee um, and re-examine what services and programs we could add to the RISE portfolio to expand impact. We've served about 110 clients to date with over 200 area em employees. Um, and with five years of history and data and understanding of what our what gaps we see in the area ecosystem and where clients might need further support. We're working with Jumpstart Incorporated to develop a strategic plan for the um, program going forward, and that's our steering committee there on the right. So we want a combination of existing supporters for the program and people who might be able to contribute to the future vision of what our community needs to support entrepreneurs. So I don't have much to report on that right now, but it will be concluded by the end of the month in January. So I would look forward to sharing those results with you and what new additions we'll add to the program. Very good. And then lastly, I want to pass it over to Ryan to cover <coughs> our Business Appreciation <coughs> Week. Uh, we're just coming off of this event. Uh, as you know, um, outreach to our existing employers is a priority for the organization, and this is a, a big tenet of our October event. So good timing to be able to share the results with all of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so last month we held our, our fifth annual Business Appreciation Week, uh, which has increasingly been a good opportunity for our organization and our network of partners to uh, continually keep our ear to the ground of the business community in Erie County and to proactively re react to their needs. Um, uh, it's a, obviously a week-long initiative. We and our partners, which make up the Economic Development Task Force, there's 15 private and public partners that participate. Uh, we had 20 volunteers visit over 100 businesses over the week. And um, the purpose is really threefold. First, it's just uh, a means for us to say thanks. And um, <clears throat> we recognize that businesses obviously have opportunities to locate in any community. And um, it's great for us to just show our appreciation for them being in Erie County. Uh, secondly, it's a really great means for our network to continually receive feedback that is um, that is current and is forward-looking so we can proactively react to their needs. And thirdly, it's a great opportunity for us to connect businesses that are growing with resources to continually expand. Uh, as I said, we visited over 100 businesses this year. I'm going to quickly go through... Um, just a, an outlook of the businesses we visited and feedback that we received from them. You can see here that uh, we visited a range of businesses, a uh, majority of which were retail, manufacturing, consumer services, um, but overall we felt had a very holistic view of our economy. We <coughs> covered a, a great geographic range across the county. Um, Obviously, majority here are, are in Sandusky and Vermilion. I'd like to add that I guess t two afternoons of Business Appreciation Week, we focus on downtown Sandusky 
and Main Street Vermilion businesses trying to get a feel for how small businesses are doing as well. Uh, so that tends to reflect those afternoons. And uh, this last one just shows uh, distribution of the size of the businesses we spoke with. Uh, in total, uh, the companies we spoke with employed over 5,000 people, which is a eighth of our entire workforce. So we felt very good that it was a great reflection of um, our economy at the moment. Overall, the business outlook has been pretty positive. Um, you'll see in the next slide the businesses generally feel that they're, they're growing or will be growing over the next year, and they have a positive outlook for their business in Erie <coughs> County. There were two main challenges that we heard repeatedly from business, uh, the first of which is workforce, and we've already spoken a bit about that, uh, and secondly was health care. Uh, we also summarized uh, needs that were identified in Sandusky and Vermilion. So as I said, <clears throat> overall we are very happy with the, the outlook of the business community. Um, we had each kind of rank their business and the county on a scale of one to five where they felt they were going to go in the next year. And you can see each of those uh, were very high. Um, also in just speaking with businesses, we identified 18 businesses that employ more than 25 people that are looking to expand over the next year. And that can be anything from um, expanding their facility to acquiring equipment and machinery or uh, simply renovations. Uh, so we are working with them to provide ongoing support. <coughs> um, yeah. I'm going to spend a, a little bit of time diving into workforce. Among businesses that employ more than 25 people, 77% said that workforce was an issue that was prohibiting their growth. So obviously a, a big issue for the county. We, we feel that there are probably three main factors that are contributing to the labor issue. You can see in this chart here, um, we've just graphed the uh, number of people that are employed in Erie County over the past 10 years. And you can see we've completely recovered from the recession in 2014 and 2015 and have actually added jobs. But in that same period of time, our population has declined by 2.5%, which equates to about 1,700 people. So companies are feeling um, increasingly competitive labor market. Um, that's added by the high seasonality that we have across the county. Our workforce tends to fluctuate by uh, up to 13% throughout the year, and that makes it more complicated as well. I guess secondly, we have a bit of demographic <coughs> issue uh, around education and around the age of our population. You can see, compared to the U.S. average, uh, our bachelor attainment is about two-thirds of that of the national average. And our population that's over 65 is, you can see here, it's six percentage points <laughs> higher than the national average. So companies are increasingly trying to deal with um, making sure that they have the level of education that they need and that they're passing on the skills from an aging workforce to the next generation. This last one is a little more complex, um, but it's basically showing an uh, increased level of wage sensitivity across the county. So the different colors on this map show variation in the cost of living. And I, the main point I'd like to point out with that is that there's not a whole lot of variation. Across the entire county, maybe uh, three to four percentage points in the cost of living. But when you look across the other counties to the average weekly wages, you can see that in Ottawa, that on average they're 16 percent higher and in Lorain County they're 10 percent higher. So we've heard from a number of businesses that um, employers, employees are leaving to pursue higher wages within the county and across the counties. Uh, in some businesses we've spoken with, the difference has only been maybe 50 cents to a dollar per hour, um, but they're still seeing a lot of wage, a lot of uh, employee movement. Uh, the second biggest uh, concern that businesses expressed was health care. Obviously, this is up in the air after the most recent election, um, but there was a lot of concern over the impact of the Affordable Care Act and with the Department of Labor, the new overtime regulations going into effect. Uh, there were several businesses that were 
capping their growth to 50 employees to avoid regulations. Uh, so obviously that was a concern as well. Uh, downtown Sandusky, most of the businesses have been very positive about uh, the progress of the city and their new economic development initiatives. Uh, if they had any concerns, it's just for public services such as trash pickup, snow removal, um, litter control. And in, the, in Vermilion, the Main Street businesses, um, they were just looking for greater cooperation and coordination among the businesses and the organizations supporting them. And uh, parking was noted as a potential issue as well. So that's just a summary of kind of the feedback that we received from Business Appreciation Week. Going forward, we'll recap this into a written report, which we'll share with the commission and with our community partners as well. But if you, any of you have any questions for Abby or I, we'd be more than happy right. to address those. How many site selectors do you talk to in the course of a year? Do they have one, two, three, four, or is it kind of random? That tends to vary quite a bit. Most of our communication with site consultants is coming through TNEO or Jobs Ohio. They tend to start statewide. They're looking at a broader geographic scope than just Erie County. Um, and the state has done a good job over the years of just really thoroughly vetting those before they're sending out to communities. So we used to report to you something called our lead referral initiative. We were reporting, you know, 100 leads received a year. Well, the conversion rate and the success rate, even statewide on those, was very slim because they weren't being thoroughly vetted before they were being distributed as an opportunity that's going to happen in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, so I would say these days we're probably averaging 25 to 40 a year that we receive um, through the state of Ohio or through TNEO or directly. Okay. I would still say the win rate and conversion for um, business attraction rates is good. Okay, very good. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. I, I did just want to drop off two things. Do I still have those? Uh, One, I know we've asked or talked about this quite a bit at our last presentation. I thought you might have an interest in just sort of a workforce summary of what's available currently in Erie County. So this is just a breakdown of opportunities that are currently posted. And then I also wanted to drop these off. These were distributed here from our business appreciation. These are posters, so um, okay. great. Thank you. Thank Thanks. We need a motion to recess into the Solid Waste District Board meeting. So moved. Mr. Shenandoah, both sides. Mr. Monaghan. Yes. Yes. <coughs> Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Enter into the uh, Solid Waste Board meeting. Uh, Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Farrow? Yes. We've been working on the solid waste plan for the past uh, year and a half, trying to get that approved by Ohio EPA. The timeline is on the second page of your packet. Um, that's kind of the overview of how we have been handling everything as far as the review board, the first draft, updating that draft to reflect what Ohio EPA wanted. Went out for public comment period. Um, we didn't have any public comment come back. We did have a public hearing and no public comment at that hearing as well. Um, we asked for modifications, um, but all the modifications were mainly from Ohio EPA. The final plan was delivered to the political subdivisions, um, and they also have to ratify the plan. We need 75% approval. We had 80. Um, we only had one community not approve, and uh, we did apologize to that community because they um, were not understanding what we were saying to them, and that was Oxford Township. The policy committee asked me to go back out to Oxford Township, Groton Township, Huron Township, City of Huron, Village of Byland, and Kelly's Island, and ask them all for their approval. Um, we probably won't get that 
before the plan is approved by Ohio EPA, it's due at uh, December 28th, but I have been scheduling meetings to go back to those communities as well. Like I said, we do have the 80% out of the 75. A few of those communities were not understanding they needed to pass resolutions, um, although I gave them resolutions, they only approved it in a motion. So um, we're gonna go back and ask for those resolutions. So with those resolutions, we did have the, um, the policy committee ratify the plan on November 16th, and today is the day that the Solid Waste Board of Directors also ratifies that plan. And then once ratified, the Solid Waste District um, sends that plan down to Ohio EPA, and they go over and um, approve that plan, and we'll get that back within 60 days. Correct. So the long and the short of this is the haulers are going to offer curbside recycling. Correct. And all of them have agreed now, even the, the one small one that hadn't? I don't have all of their their service provider agreements back, but they are all under the understanding that this is what's moving forward. Um, and Republic was the one that actually um, offered this plan up, that they do this somewhere else. So yes. So, so what happens if that guy that didn't approve it doesn't? Do we do have the authority to um, not allow them to be using the landfill if they do not sign the service provider agreements. They have to sign the service provider agreement to be a, a customer of our landfill. That's our authoritative power. And the city of Sandusky is not involved in this, right? Then? The city of Sandusky already had something in place prior, correct. Is that what their says too? Yes. And that's part of their ordinance 99.5, I think is what it is, or 995. Okay, we got a move. motion and second. I'm going to call the roll. Okay, and discussion. Um, all in favor, or I'm sorry, Mr. Shenago? Yes. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Okay. In the January meeting, I'll bring up more of um, the 2016 accomplishments, 2017 goals, our budgets, um, and, and plans for uh, next year. Okay. Any other questions for the Solid Waste District? No? We a motion to return. Oh, that dead gentleman has a question. I didn't, I didn't hear a, a, a point where there was public input at all before you voted, but I'll ask the question anyway. Don't you find a problem that there was 0% public input into this? I personally have a great interest in this. I mean, if you have zero input from the public, that, that surprises me tells me that maybe public didn't know what was going on. We advertised in the newspaper as well as websites and on the radio. We had more public involvement at the individual municipality meetings than we did as, um, as a whole. So uh, when I went, went to Florence Township, we had a lot of Florence Township residents there discussing about what we were to, um, talking about. I do direct people to that public comment, but every, um, I've done, I've written our plan twice and the last time we didn't have public involvement as well during that specific, that specific point. But we do always have public involvement at the municipalities, but they don't actually go and take the survey or um, send in any comments. They usually address them at those municipality meetings. And you can, they can reach any questions they have in regards to this through the website, through? Through the website and contact our office as well. Plus every meeting that the policy committee has is an open meeting. Correct. It's a public meeting, as well as these meetings. It still raises the same question. If people did, if you had no public input, the question remains is, why is that? I'm sure this is a, an issue for most people, especially the retired people in the community. Well, uh, in fact, so yeah. that's, that remains my question. I'm only raising the question because I think Zero is not a good number for public input. Well, they've had opportunity. They just chose not to participate. Possibly they didn't know about it, too. Well, that may be so, but... You publish it. You publish those things in, in the paper. You, you publish all of it. Yeah, a lot with Steve Schaffner um, on those news. And that's usually when, we, you know, we... Again, we do receive phone calls and emails, and, and Andy sends me stuff about the mailbag. And so we do usually have comments about it, but not specifically public comment involvement as far as the plan goes, unless it's at a municipality meeting. Okay. Thank you for your question, sir. Anybody else? Anything else, Lisa? 
No, nope, that's it for me. Do we need a motion and go back to regular session? We need to so move to adjourn. Oh, I did not. Oh, motion to adjourn uh, the solid waste board meeting. <laughs> so moved. Okay, got a motion. I have a second. Second. Okay, Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Farrow? Yes. Okay. Now we need a motion to recess into. Well, reconvene. Well, all right. Motion to reconvene the office. So moved. <clears throat> second, Pat. Second. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Shenigo. <laughs> Mr. Farrell. Okay, yes. now. Now we need a motion to okay. recess <laughs> into the Erie <laughs> County Improvement Corporation board meeting, Mr. Lake Bell. Okay, I need a second. Second. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. <laughs> Got the uh, other board members back here, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Mancher. Okay, Mr. Lickfeld, do you want to do the roll call? Okay. Hey, you want to do stuff? Yeah, sure. Mr. Monahan. Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Shanigo? Yeah. Here, Mr. Reister, Lickfeld's here, Mr. Bob McCarthy, not here, Mr. Jeffrey. Here. Okay, we need a motion to dispense with the reading of the previous minutes. So moved. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Now we need the treasurer's report, Mr. Mancher. Looking at 2015, um, just so you know, we had uh, restricted grants come into the organization of $30,000, which was appropriately dispensed in accordance with our agreement to Erie County Economic Development Corp. Um, we received uh, the $5,000 back from the um, Port Authority that we had given them in 2014 when they were going through their process. Um, and then we uh, expended $400 for, for, for professional services um, left us with uh, $4,610 of excess of receipts over disbursements and $5,121 in our account. Uh, during 2016, year to date, uh, we've received restricted grants of $22,500, which again were appropriately dispersed to Erie County Economic Development Corp. Uh, we did have $400 in professional services, uh, leaving with us with a balance in our cash account of $4,721. And uh, we do have one more $7,500 um, restricted grant to receive and disperse to Erie County Economic Development before the end of the year. Very good. Thank you. Any questions? Need a motion to inspect the treasurer's report? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. like sign. <laughs> Nominating committee report, Mr. Bickfeld. Right. Uh, from the nominating committee, uh, we have well, two things. First thing is a recommendation of the nominating committee to fix the number of members of the Board of Trustees at nine. And for the election of trustees, the recommendation of the nominating committee is to keep the current members of the trustees in place and add an additional Matthew Old. recommendation would be to fix the number of trustees at nine and to elect as a trustees for an ensuing year all the trustees with the addition of Matt Old. Do we have we have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like say. Now we have the election of trustees. Well, we, we just did that. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah motion to adjourn. We need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. 
Now, the unusual thing about our organization is we just had the membership meeting, now we're going to go into the trustees' meeting. Okay. I think we can dispense with the roll call at time. Yes, we can. We, we can need dispense with the minutes. Yeah, we can dispense with three and three minutes. How about the election of officers, Mr. Bechtel? Okay, the officers, the recommendation of the officers for the ensuing year would be the president of the Erie Community Co Corporation would be Mr. Bill Linehan, uh, vice president, Mr. Matthew O, uh, treasurer, Mr. Daniel Monitor, and secretary, Gary Lickfeld. So that would be the... I would make that motion. Okay. I'll second that motion. Sorry, I don't no, feel well. I don't feel well today, Gary. So all, in all those in favor, signify by saying aye. <coughs> aye. Opposed, like sign. Okay. The other part of the business is, and we've always done this historically, is the uh, state auditor, for some unknown reason, wants a report filed with the state auditor with regard to our financial records, and we have some things that dang it then as far as reports that we have to file. So uh, I would make a motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like saying. Okay. And the other final piece of business, and we have done it historically, and I've talked to Ed Whitman, is that historically, and it's up to the board, obviously, that we have a motion to authorize the president and secretary of the corporation to execute any funding agreement with the Erie County Economic Development Corporation. And just a small sidelight. Any money that the URI CIC receives from the Board of County Commissioners through this agreement would be passed on to the URI County Economic Development Corporation. So we have done that historically. I'd make that motion. Okay. And second? Dan Montreal. Dan seconded all. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like, sign. Okay. And with that, Thank you, Gary. Okay, Sam, I'll let you make a second. I'll second, Mr. Clayton. Okay, record. Jeffrey seconded. <coughs> you go second. Record reflected, Mr. Montre abstained. Right. You and Donald Trump. Okay, is that it, Gary? Need a motion to adjourn. That's it. Need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Bill. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we don't see you. Have a Merry Christmas. We need a motion to reconvene for Carolyn's sake. Thank so move. <laughs> yes. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Shenegal? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. And we'll have any public comment regarding any media agenda <laughs> items. Yeah, and then we need a motion to adjourn. Yes, public comment. Oh, go ahead. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yes, I've got a question about some property that the county owns. It's 45. Uh, 4405 Galloway Road, the old Ed and Jubilee site. Yes. Can you tell us what the um, current status of that property is? That's in the hands of our legal department, so I would leave that up to Mr. Gross. And what is the answer to that? Um, best of my knowledge is there is a negotiation underway uh, regarding a possible lease and Honestly, as the attorney for the county, I'm bound by attorney-client privilege not to divulge that. That is the privilege of the client as the county, whether or not they wish to divulge any of the information that's under attorney-client privilege. And I'll ask that question. I choose not to. It's under negotiation. Yeah, I, so. I think you got to let the attorneys take their take its course and let them sit down and negotiate. We and should have... Been, um, Put out for bid, or has the public been aware of it that the property is for sale? The property has actually been vacant for two years, pretty close to two years. And, and Bowling Green State University, I know, took a look at it at one time. And there was somebody else who took a look at it, and I'm not sure who. And 
an outside, I'm not sure who the other one was, but we also had uh, heat shade from the health department went through it about a year and a half ago. So is this going to be used by a county agency or a state agency, or is this going to be on the fire department? No, it'll be used by a not-for-profit governmental agency. I could add something to that from a legal aspect. There's a provision in the revised code that allows the county to uh, lease or sell property to another subdivision of the state of Ohio, in other words, another governmental entity without bidding, as long as the board finds it to be in the best interest of the county. That's a specific statutory provision. I don't have that number in front of me, but I can tell you that, that that's the situation when the county is dealing with county property that it finds to be uh, unnecessary for the county's own use, they can then make a, make a deal with another subdivision of the state without having to put that out to bid. Is it safe to assume that that's going to go, that property's going to go to another subdivision then? There's negotiations going on. Will that eventually go before this board? Yeah, it will have to. There's nothing official unless it occurs in a public meeting uh, voted on by the board. It can't be done in any other way. And when might that take place? That's above my pay grade. I don't know. Who would know? I don't know that there is a definite date. Um, that's all we can offer you, but uh, Car uh, sir, for our records, Carolyn needs your name and address. Uh, your address. Okay. We need a motion to adjourn. We so moved. Okay. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Senegal? Boy for another year. Mr. Senegal? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Thank you.